last time. We defeated Pokemon Heart Gold without learning any new moves, which was fun. However, this time, I'm just going to get something out of the way real quick. Extra Sensory. There we go. Today we're going to boot up our Pokemon Crystal, and as you can probably tell by the title, we are going to play the entire game with only using Unknown. Now, Unknown are picked for a specific reason. They can only learn Hidden Power. So it's a one move, one Pokemon challenge. If you didn't know, Hidden Power has a base power of 60, which is pretty good for early game move, but has diminishing marginal return. And its type is completely dependent on the Pokemon's DVs, which long story short means that any Pokemon can have any Hidden Power type based on its stats. So why Unknown? Here's Unknown's base stats in a comparison when compared to the other 250 Pokemon in the game. It's 188th in hit points, base hit points at least. It's actually 118th in attack, which is pretty good. However, it's 190th in defense, which again is below average. It's actually 96th in special attack, which is really good. But again, 193rd in special defense. And finally, its speed is 179th. So as you can tell, it's pretty below average Pokemon. So we do what we do, and we boot up our Pokemon Crystal. We name ourselves the Smiley Face, and we pick Cyndaquil as our starter, although it's not really important. The rival pulls up on us, and it's actually one of the only instances where you can lose the first battle of the game and still progress, and he, we named him the Sad Face, because why not? We enter the ruins of Alf, Aleph, Alf, I'm going to say Alf. We solve the first puzzle in the northeast corner of the ruins, and it's just this lovely depiction of a Kabuto that I do struggle to solve, and then we start catching our unknown. So we catch unknown E, unknown F, unknown J, and unknown G, of course, which, and also K, which I didn't quite, and A. We catch a lot of unknown, pretty much. And I only nicknamed the A because, yeah, I didn't realize it was a problem until I noticed I had the same character model. So, here's Violet City's map. Now, here are the Pokemon on the adjacent surrounding areas. You can get Rattata in the Sprout Tower. Uh, you can get Pidgey and Bellsprout on either route to the left or right. There's actually no grass below, unlike the remakes. You can also get Hoppip, Weedle, Caterpie, and there's Dark Cave as well. So why is that important? I used all these Pokemon to determine what hidden power all my unknown were. Now, I caught one of each. Here are all their hidden powers. All right, it's a fair list. I, I couldn't quite decide if it was grass or bug, and I didn't really care. Sorry. And then there are the six that I chose to be in my team for the rest of the game. Now, we have good variety. In fact... Very good early game typing. So I went to the Sprout Tower and finished business. Unknown K cleaned up all the Bell Sprout. And here a look at the levels before we take on Faulkner, who, as a flying type specialist, Unknown G and Unknown J, as they are Hidden Power Ice and Hidden Power Electric. As you can see from the barely sped up footage, we win the battle in two turns. And, I mean, I guess we get lucky with the crit there, but... It probably would have knocked it out in one move anyways. So we get our Zephyr badge, feeling pretty good. Go to the Slowpoke well, clear out Team Rocket. Kurt thanks us, and then the rival pulls up on us. And the rival has a Ghastly and a Zubat, which both know super effective moves at this point. And Croconaw doesn't yet. Croconaw does learn Bite eventually, but <laughs> doesn't know it now. We go to Bugsy, and Scyther, <laughs> when, if Scyther gets going with Fury Cutter, the battle is over for us. If you didn't know, Fury Cutter gets more powerful every consecutive use but we get our hive badge and then we take a visit to our daycare which is creepy to say the least and then we go to the name raider finally to change all the nicknames for the unknowns to their relevant letters which then we took on whitney and yeah the name of the game is make sure whitney's milk tank does not roll through my entire team and we do pretty well. I mean, it did take a couple of attempts, I'm not going to lie, but Unknown K gets it down in the end. And Whitney, after a bit of a cry, gives us our plane badge. So we bike away to Ecrotique City, where we finally do the pulling up on the rival. And this battle isn't easy. Croconaw finally knows bite. So although we get through Haunter, Croconaw just prove such a threat now and it's going to prove such a threat for the rest of the game but we do get the win we activate the legendary dogs you know as we do here are the levels before we take on the ecrotech gym i'm showing you because they greatly differ from the next clip when we're in the ecrotech gym because morty has a level 25 gengar that sweeps us with shadow ball so as you can see everyone is level 30 now just so we don't get swept by that shadow ball 
we pull out the wind, we get our fog badge, and now it's time for a very familiar sequence of events. Basically, good rod, crabby, surfing. But as usual, I forgot strength, which you actually need in the gym, so I went back. So we healed the Empress of the Light Tower with the Secret Potion, got Jasmine back in the gym, and then we kind of just jumped down the right side of the Light Tower. Not sure why they don't put the elevator in like the remakes, but I guess, you know, can't really fix anything. On our way to the gym, noticed we had Krabby in the party. Not ideal, so I went back to the Pokemon Center, made a quick pit stop, put Unknown H back in the cut, and then we took Jasmine on. Which, yeah, we're taking Jasmine on finally before price, which is, I can't believe it either. But Jasmine was actually easy with the unknown. We got Jasmine before we beat Chuck, which says a world, because I absolutely struggle with Jasmine. But, yeah, there it is. We actually beat her. I can't believe it either. We got the mineral badge. And then, we beat Chuck. We went and got strength, we came back to Samwood, and we beat Chuck as well. Yeah. Amazing. We got the 6th badge before the 5th, for the first time ever, because we usually get the 7th before the 6th. And then we took in the Gyarados at Lake of Rage. Also, I thought, so we encountered a Magikarp the tile before. I thought I pressed A, I clearly didn't, but I got a bit scared, I thought I glitched the game out. Very relieved to see this sit green. I forgot that it does say something before you encounter it, but um, we knock it out, got the red scale, that we don't end up cashing in. Ended up finding the Team Rocket hideout, defeating them. And then we went and paid a visit to our old friend Price. Now, Price, the seventh gym leader, is actually being challenged seventh for once. As you can tell by the levels, you can't really blame me for taking him on any earlier because, I mean, all of his Pokemon are weaker than Steel. I'm actually going to double check to see if I'm right here. So yeah, he is seventh, so save your comment. But um, yeah, we beat him. Not that it matters. And then we receive the Glacier Badge, take on the rival in the other Team Rocket hideout under Goldenrod City. Remember when I said that Fraligator would be a problem? <laughs> Fraligator becomes a problem in this battle. But it isn't only the biggest challenge that we come up against in Goldenrod City, because this Team Rocket executive has a Houndoom, as you can see by the level difference. This Houndoom pretty much sweeps us. Obviously because Houndoom's a dark type that uses a dark move in Bite, which is not only super effective, but also gets a stab bonus because it's a dark type. But yeah, we eventually beat it. And we <laughs> mercilessly... And Suicune's run at the top in the Tin Tower. And then Suicune's friends pulled up on us. But they reminded me not to forget Waterfall like I did last time. But then we pulled up on Claire, the 8th gym leader. And the strategy is throw everything at Dragonair until G can sweep him. And then throw G constantly at Kingdra. Then throw J constantly at Kingdra until A actually gets the clear there. And we get the dub. She won't admit it. I wouldn't either if I lost to a team of unknowns with dragon Pokemon. Then she eventually gives us the badge. But we have unfinished business at the Ruins of Alf. We go and solve all the puzzles to activate all the unknown. And you, I struggle with the Omnite one. And then we catch all the unknowns from U to N. We even caught the L. Only once though. Until we used our Master Ball on the final unknown, which was X. And... There's my unknown report, just to flex on you guys. And then we went to the Kanto region, and this guy harassed us at the border, as he usually does. Got our badges checked, and we were in Victory Road before we knew it, beating the rival, who's Fraligator, again, a problem. But we have 10 levels on the Fraligator, so we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. So we march all the way into the Pokemon League, and into the room of William. Did I make the he likes to be called Will joke? I don't think I did, but just imagine I did. Anyways, Unknown G picks up the Zartus, Unknown K and A take out the Jinx, Unknown K takes out the Exeggutor with the help of C, and Unknown C takes out the Slowbro with the help of J, and we get the dub, then we go to Koga, and Koga lives life like a ninja, but Unknown K takes out a lot of Koga's team, I believe Unknown G helps with the Muck and the Crobat, I think J also helps with the Crobat, but yeah, it's usually, usually G, K, and J. C makes an appearance here. I can't remember why. But then we take on Bruno. Now, Bruno's a bit tougher because we don't have a super effective move against Bruno. Except against his Onyx, which obviously we have unknown H. But we end up throwing everything at Machamp, and eventually the game gives us the win, just off pure persistence. Which prepares us for our next battle against Karen, because Karen is a Dark-type user. Now, Dark-types end unknown. This is race, pretty much. But that Houndoom is such a problem, and you'll see why by the levels of my unknown in comparison, but... It one-hit KOs at my entire team with Crunch, 
So I had to train the unknown to the point where they wouldn't get one hit KO, which happened to be around mid-level 60s, which actually undoes the integrity of our next battle against Lance. I can't believe Karen was the real champion in this run. Like you're telling me I marched down this massive hallway to finally talk to Lance, only to have the champion the battle previous and Lance be an absolute cakewalk? Which he was, Unknown J cleans up Gyarados and Dragonite, and then Unknown G cleans up everything else with its Hidden Power Ice, which was actually why I was so excited to get Hidden Power Ice at the start of the game. But here are the Unknown in the Hall of Fame, all around mid-level 60s, which is a bit... Yeah, it's a sign of things to come, but we enter Kanto, and Kanto is very uneventful. The only gym leader I struggled against was Blue, I believe, which is, which is fair enough. Blue's actually very strong, but we beat all of them. Professor Oak gives us the permission to go to Mount Silver, and waiting for us at Mount Silver, you guys already know, Mr. Red. Before that though, Professor Oak decides that it's okay to take a shot at our Pokedex, even though we only use Unknown. And then I prepared the Unknown for our next battle through legitimate means, of course. And then we took on Red, with all the Unknowns being level 95, because the battle was far too difficult otherwise. G takes out Pikachu and then does some serious work on Espeon taking it out. With Snorlax, he uses Amnesia first. If A didn't take it out, we would never win the battle. That's, yeah. Amnesia makes it way too difficult to take down for anything else other than Unknown A, which has Hidden Power Fighting. Everything else, we kind of just brute force. As you can see, C does a lot of work on Blaster until G cleans it up. And then K comes out for Venusaur. I don't know if it gets boosted by the Sunny Day because it has Fire Hidden Power, but... We end up getting the dub, and that completes the challenge. Red is defeated again. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, chuck us a like, maybe subscribe, tell your friends, I don't know. Leave a comment, I don't know. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Sorry for the delay in the upload, I've been doing exams. Also, I want to bring back the Palace Challenge, so if you like that, let me know. It's basically a playthrough where we beat Pokemon Emerald using exclusively a random number generator, so... Interesting idea, but yeah, check it out if you want. See you later.